The power tools for AWS Lambda.NET logging utility provides a Lambda optimized logger to output JSON logs. Some of the key features of the logging utility includes capturing key fields from the Lambda context, outputting logs in the JSON format, sampling logs based on the percentage of the request, appending additional keys to the logs, indicating cold start information, etc. In this video, let's learn how to get started using the logging utility from the PowerTools framework. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos around .NET, Cloud and DevOps. This video is sponsored by AWS and is part of my .NET on AWS series. The logging utility from the PowerTools framework provides an optimized logger for the Lambda. You can find more details about the logging utility in the PowerTools for Lambda.NET website, which will be linked in the descriptions below. Now to get started using this logging utility, we need to install a NuGet package. Let's switch over to Visual Studio and start seeing this in action. Here I have an existing solution that I used for the Lambda logger PowerTools tracing video. Video. I have added a new project under the same solution with the name Lambda Power Tools Logging. Now, if you expand this, you can see the functions.cs and also a startup.cs. This uses the Lambda annotations framework, which makes it quite easy to build Lambda functions in .NET. If you're new to annotations framework, I highly recommend checking out the video linked here and also in the descriptions below. Now, if I navigate to the functions.cs, you can see this is a simple Lambda function, which injects in an I DynamoDB context and uses that inside the function handler. Now the function handler takes in a city name as a parameter and it uses that to get the weather forecast from a DynamoDB table, which is named weather forecast. Now this Lambda function is explicitly using a role, which is defined in the serverless.template file. The serverless.template file is part of the Lambda annotations framework and is used to generate the cloud formation template required to deploy the function. Now this one is automatically generated, which you can tell from the name inside this function's end. However, I manually added in the API Lambda execution role so that it has the necessary permissions to connect and talk with the DynamoDB table. Now you can see here, this has permissions to have all actions on the weather forecast table. Now this is the role that is getting applied to this cloud formation template that is automatically getting generated. You can see that the role is defined here in the auto generated function handler. Now to learn all about this, I highly recommend checking out my videos on the Lambda annotations framework. Now, in the function handler, it also injects in the DynamoDB context, which is getting set up in the startup.cs class using the Lambda startup attribute. This again is part of the annotations framework and uses the Lambda startup attribute from the annotations framework. Now here I am injecting in the iDynamoDB context and which is getting used by the functions.cs. Now with the function ready to go, let's add some logs to this application. For this, we will be using the PowerTools logging utility. So let's right click on the project and say manage NuGet packages and add the NuGet package. So let's search for PowerTools logging and let's add the AWS Lambda PowerTools.logging NuGet package. So let's click install which installs this NuGet package into this project. So once installed, let's switch back to our functions.cs and let's start using this. The logging NuGet package provides an attribute that you can apply on this function handler. So let's apply this attribute, which is logging, which is coming from the PowerTools Lambda logging namespace. So let's include the appropriate namespace and we have applied this attribute. Now inside here, we can specify some of the key properties. So let's specify the log event is equal to true, which makes sure that this event is getting captured inside the logs. Now by default, this is turned off to prevent any sensitive information getting logged automatically. So you can explicitly choose to enable the log event is equal to true if you're sure there is no sensitive information in your request payload. Now in this scenario, the log event captures the first parameter for this function handler and logs that by default. Now here we have the string city name because I'm using the annotations framework. Now, if you're directly integrating with the API gateway, this would have been the API gateway HTTP request object, which will have the complete information of the incoming API request. 
Now, in cases where you are integrating with other AWS services, it will be having that event as the input, like the S3 event, the SQS event, etc. However, for now, let's use the city name as the one that gets automatically logged. Now, as part of the logging attribute, we can also specify the service name. So we can add the service attribute and specify a name for this service. Now, this is going to automatically add this name for all the logs that is getting created under this function handler. So if we specify the name as get weather forecast, so that we know any logs coming from this handler has the service name as get weather forecast. You can use this to filter down the logs in CloudWatch when you want to see only the get weather forecast endpoint logs. Now there are also additional properties for this logging attribute. So if I switch back to the documentation, you can see you can set up the log level the logger case, the sampling rate, etc., as part of this attribute. You can also set it up as an environment variables as shown in this documentation here. So you can set up these environment variable names exactly the same inside your Lambda functions environment variables. Now to explicitly add in a logging statement, you can use the logger class, which is coming from the logging power tools NuGet package. The logger class has various static methods, including the log generic method, the log critical debug error information, etc. So you can choose log information in this case and let's write a log statement. So let's try getting weather data information. Now here I'm using the static method from the logger class. You can also create a new logger instance from this logger using the create method. So let's add in an instance level variable for this class. So let's update this to use the normal constructor creation and let's create an underscore logger and create a new logger instance inside our functions constructor. So let's use the logger.create method and let's pass the type as the function itself. So it uses this as the category name for this logger. Now this is a common pattern inside the .NET logging framework as well. You can check out my video on .NET logging, which will be linked here and in the descriptions below. So let's make sure to instantiate this new parameter. So let's create a field logger and let's start use this to log as well. So inside here, we can specify logger dot log information. And let's say getting weather data information using the created logger. Now, both of this are going to be similar in behavior. Let's deploy this function and see this in action. So let's right click on the project and say publish to Lambda. Let's give this a stack name. So let's say weather dash get info and let's publish this. Now this is going to use the serverless dot template, package this, upload this to an S3 storage and deploy the template from there. Now the uploading is complete and it has started deploying the cloud formation template to the AWS stack. It will be creating the different resources that we have specified inside the serverless dot template file. The deployment is complete. So let's switch over to AWS console, navigate to Lambda, and navigate to the Lambda function that we just deployed. So let's navigate to the monitor tab. Let's open the CloudWatch logs. And right now we don't have any logs because we haven't executed the Lambda function. So let's switch back to Visual Studio. Let's use this URL to invoke this API URL. So if you switch over to the functions.cs, you can see this has the route of slash city name. So let's navigate back. Let's click this and specify a city name in here. So let's specify Brisbane and this is going to hit the DynamoDB and retrieve the data for us. So let's switch back to CloudWatch and refresh this to see our first logs. Now this has created a new log stream. So let's navigate into that to see our application logs. Here you can see three logs written by this function. One of them is from the log event true. The other two are the explicit logger statements that we wrote in the application. So if we expand this, you can see this information as with the message Brisbane, which is the first parameter of that function handler. That is the city name. You can also see that this specifies that the cold start is true in this particular case. Now the next time I'm going to hit the API endpoint, that is going to be false because there is already an instance of the Lambda function running. You can also see the other information inside here as the JSON attributes. This is the service name that we specified in the attribute, which is get weather forecast. So if I collapse this, you can expand the other two logs and see the information inside that. So you can see this is written the exact same statement that we have written, which is the getting weather data information and also getting weather data information using the created logger. Both of these has the similar attributes getting logged 
as part of this log statement. Now, if I make an additional request, so let's make this with the name Sydney and let's come back to the logs and refresh this. And here you can see the additional log information. Now, if I expand this, in this case, the cold start is specified as false. Now, this is because this was the second request to the same Lambda instance. Now, in both these scenarios, we did not add any extra parameters to this log statement. So let's say we want to also specify the city name in this log statement. So let's say getting weather data for information for the city and let's pass in the city name. So let's pass this as a parameterized attribute. So let's specify city name in curly braces. Now to pass parameters to this log statement, we can create a new object array and pass the parameters in comma separated values. So in this case, we only need to pass the city name. Now, if you have additional parameters specified in the logger message template, you can pass additional properties as comma separated values in here. So let's deploy this and see how this changes the logging information. So I'll publish this. The deployment is complete. So let's switch back to the browser. Let's create a new request. So let's specify Brisbane again. Let's come back in our CloudWatch and this is going to create a new log stream because it's going to create a new Lambda instance since we just deployed the function. So let's navigate to the latest log stream created. And in here, let's navigate to the second log statement and you can see that this logs getting weather data information for city Brisbane. However, note that the Brisbane parameter or the city name parameter is not getting written in any of these properties. Now, by default, when using logging in .NET Core, this is the default experience that we expect. However, the current version of the logging utility framework that I have used in this video does not log these parameters as extra properties in the log statement. Now, I have raised a GitHub request, which will be linked in the descriptions below if you want to follow that up. However, we we can explicitly pass in additional properties in the logger statement. Now to do that, let's come back to our solution. Let's specify the extra keys that we need to log. So let's say extra keys is equal to, let's create a new dictionary of string string and let's pass in the key value pair. Now in this case, let's say we need to pass the city name. Let's pass the city name as this. Let's also pass in the count of this particular result set. So let's create a new key value pair and let's specify count. And in this case, let's use the results.count. So this is going to add two key value pairs in this dictionary. So let's specify this as two string because this is a string string dictionary. Now, once we have the extra keys that we need to log, so let's use the logger instance and let's write a new log information. So let's first pass the extra keys parameter to the log information. Let's specify the message template. So in this case, let's say retrieved weather data for city. Let's pass the city name and also let's specify the count. So let's say count. Now here we need to explicitly pass in the parameters to replace for this template as well. So let's create a new array and let's pass the city name and also the count. So that's going to be results.count and let's specify to string as well. Now here we have explicitly passed in the extra keys as a dictionary of key value pairs. And we have also specified in the message template, the city name and account. But for this to work, we again need to pass this as additional parameters. Now, this is a bit of overhead. However, this will get us to write these two keys inside the log output. So let's build this and deploy this again and see this in action. The deployment is complete. So let's switch back. Let's create a new request. So let's specify Sydney in this case and let's make a request. So this is going to again create a new instance of Lambda because I just deployed a new function. So let's switch back and let's go to the latest log stream. Now in here, let's go to the last log statement, which we just added, which is going to say retrieved weather data for city, Sydney with 27. Now you can see there is also additional properties, city name, and also the count that is getting written as part of the JSON output. Now these two properties are coming from the dictionary that we just passed to this log information method. As we add more properties in here, that is going to add these inside this log statement. However, note that this extra keys is going to get logged only for this log statement and the other log statements does not have that information. Now in scenarios where you want to add properties to all the log statements that's happening inside that function handler, you can use the append key or the append keys function. So if I switch back to this Visual Studio, let's say we want to add the key city name to all the log statements. So we can specify the logger.append key 
or use the append keys to pass multiple values. So in this case, let's use the append key function. Let's specify the key name. So in this case, let's specify we need to have the city name as part of all the logs. And let's also pass the value for that. In this case, city name. Now any logs written after this statement is going to have the city name appended as part of the log statement. So the first statement is not going to have the city name as part of the parameter. Now you can also use the append key as part of conditional expressions. So let's say we need to append special keys only if a specific criteria meets. So let's add a conditional append key as well to demonstrate that. So let's say if the results.count is greater than 10, then let's add a specific key inside here. So let's say greater than or equal to 10. In this case, let's add an append key. So let's say logger dot append key, let's say special count, and let's say results dot count inside this as the value. So let's save and build this, and let's deploy this to see this in action. The deployment is complete, so let's switch back. Let's create a new request for Sydney. Now here there are definitely more than 10 records. So let's also make a request to Brisbane. And let's also say, let's want to make a request for London. Now in this case, there is only less than 10 records. So let's switch back to the logs and see what is happening. So let's refresh this, go to the latest log stream. And here we can see the different log statements. Now, if you navigate to the log statement right after this one, which is the getting weather data information for city city name. So let's say the one that is using created logger, we should be able to see the city name property. So let's navigate to the first log of that. So this is the one which says using the created logger. And in here you can see there is a city name that is getting logged. Now this is coming as part of the append key, which we called right before that log statement. Now any log statements that's going to happen after that is going to have that city name inside this. Now in here, since the special count was greater than 10, we have also added this log, which is saying special count as 27. So now if you scroll down, you can see inside the Brisbane logging statement, you can see this has retrieved weather data with the count 56. So in this case, the special count is 56. The so the value was overwritten when the count was new. However, if you navigate to the London logs, you can see that this still has the special count as 56, even though we did not log this because the count was less than 10. However, you can see that the value is lingering from the previous request that was for Brisbane and logging that in here. Now this is because the logger is getting reused inside our function. Now this is the same logger instance that's getting applied to these multiple requests. Now, since I was making the request sequentially, the same Lambda instance function handler was serving these requests. Now we learned about this inside my AWS Lambda lifecycle video, which will be linked here. Now to avoid this state information from lingering on to the subsequent request, we can explicitly clear this logger state on this logging attribute. So we can specify an additional property which says clear state is equal to true. So this makes sure that the logger state is cleared every time this function handler is getting invoked. So with this new property set, let's build this and deploy this again and see how our logs are fixed. So let's say publish to Lambda and let's publish this new version. The publish is successful. So let's switch back. Let's go to this endpoint. So let's specify Brisbane and this is going to return back more than 10 records, which is going to add that property. And let's also make a call to London and let's switch over to the CloudWatch logs. So let's go to the latest log stream. So in here, you can see the two logs coming in. So if I expand the first one for Brisbane, you can see this has the 56 and it also writes the special count 56. However, if I scroll down now to London and look at that, you can see that this count is three. However, we don't have the property special count in here. Because we use the clear state, it cleared the state of the logger and made sure that parameter is not lingering on to the subsequent request. So if you're using any of the logger append keys, I highly recommend setting up the clear state property on this logging attribute. Now, one of the things that you need to be aware of is that any exceptions happening right now inside this logger statement will also cause the application from crashing. Now, this is not a desired behavior because application logs is less critical than the actual application working. So you wouldn't expect a log statement to bring down the whole application. So I have raised a feature request to this library which will be linked in the descriptions below where you can follow the status of this task. I hope this helps you to get started with the logging utility as part of the PowerTools Lambda framework. We saw how easy it is to set up and get started using this new utility framework. We saw how to pass in the extra keys, pass parameters to these messages and log them in the JSON format. You can try playing around with the sampling rate property, which we did not cover in this video, which you can use to log certain amount of requests to your output. Now, this is particularly 
only useful for logging debug statements and to only log a certain amount of them so that you do not end up having a lot of log statements. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. If you want to be notified of future such videos, please hit that subscribe button as well. It also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.